Coming up in this fin cast, we'll be adding some plants to the tannin tank. Well, I actually have worked with public aquariums for about seven years. Um, I uh, work now in the Florida Keys at several facilities, and then my own personal tanks, I have a five gallon and then a 45 tall. Um, honestly, I'm used to very, very large tanks, like 650,000 tanks, so I'm actually new to these smaller tanks. Um, and my BioCube has been giving me a little bit of issues just because it's, it's a bit of a difference going from treating a large tank to such a tiny thing. And this seems like the perfect product for me. Hey everybody, John here with another FinCast and today we'll have an update for you on the Tannin Tank, the botanical tank that uh, I started back in February of 2017, so roughly 18 months ago as I speak right here today. A lot of you have been requesting updates on this aquarium and I will tell you that I, I think it's doing pretty well with a couple of qualifiers. So today what I want to do is give you a look at the aquarium as it is today. Also, uh, gonna do some planting in that tank to give it a little bit more green, a little bit less brown, uh, comparatively speaking. Uh, I guess the same amount of brown, but with more green, so we're changing the, the proportion and mixing it up a little bit. And I'm gonna try adding some additional light to it to see if we can't get those plants to grow. So we'll show you that process and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what excites me about this aquarium and also what frustrates me. So on the exciting side of this tank, uh, I, I think that the decomposition of the botanicals is going really well and I think that the, the bottom of the aquarium is really, really starting to look natural. And again, it's taken 18 months. I went through one round of botanicals that I ordered from Tannin Aquatics, and then uh, I've actually added a, a second round where, which I boil and then I put in the aquarium. And you can look at the whole playlist if you want and kind of track it along with me. But this is a, an image right here, which we got from Mike Tushinardi, who had the opportunity to actually go snorkeling in the uh, Rio Negro section of the Amazon River Basin. These are uh, live cardinal tetras, and you can see sort of the detritus on the bottom here, the driftwood and the leaves and so forth. So that's really what it looks like, and that's what I was going for. And I would say that at this point, it's about what I've got. As you look at the bottom of the tank, you can see that there's a whole lot of crud that's just uh, deposited itself as these leaves have decayed over time in some of the pods and so forth. So uh, I think that's working out. The other thing that I find incredible is that with all this stuff on the bottom of the aquarium, there's almost no algae on the glass. I never have to wipe this tank down. So uh, clearly, uh, even though you've got all this stuff rotting and decaying in the tank, I'm not getting those uh, levels of nutrients, the phosphates and the nitrates and that kind of thing that would normally uh, kind of create the algae growth that makes your glass look awful all the time. That is not the case in this aquarium. So let's take a look at the aquascape and while I tell you that I had uh, uh, done a previous video on the star grass in my normal planted tank that had absolutely gone nuts and so I floated a bunch of it in the tannin tank until I could get in there and plant some of it. Uh, as it turns out, when I got there to, to work on planting that, there wasn't much left of it. It, it had decayed. Uh, it was not happy in that tannin water. Uh, it wanted to have some roots down in the substrate, and I didn't have that. Probably didn't have enough light on it. Didn't manage it at all. So uh, I had some star grass already planted in the tank, and that had done okay, and it started stringing up towards the top, which is what it was doing because it was searching for the light. Um, and so I was able to snip off some of those pieces and, and, and have some, uh, some sections that I could then place in the substrate and, and get it started. And I've actually got some more star grass in my planted tank that's already starting to take off. The planted tank, that I, though, I do manage for plants. It's got CO2 injection and so forth. Anyway, uh, so while we're looking at, at me looking for places to uh, put this star grass and create some greenery in the tannin tank, uh, I can tell you that I'm, I have not been particularly happy with how things are going with the fish in that aquarium, and I'm not exactly sure why. 
So obviously with all that uh, crud or detritus on the bottom, decayed leaves, call it what you will, uh, the aquarium got pretty stirred up, uh, which was interesting because the angelfish were loving it. They were all over the tank looking for, for things to eat and, and apparently finding some stuff. Um, but I can tell you that with the epistogrammas that I originally put in there, uh, they came and went. Uh, I had a good collection, I want to say six checkerboard cichlids. Uh, I'm down to one. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with the pencil fish in that aquarium, but uh, and I actually even restocked with another six, and now I'm down to one. The quarry cats have not done well in there. Uh, in fact, I have no quarry cats now. Uh, there were some ram cichlids, uh, the little blue rams. They came and went. Uh, and I'm not sure why, because very seldom do I ever see a sick fish in that aquarium. And as far as I know, my water parameters are, are pretty near normal. In fact, I even tried a, a wild pair of, Af of, uh, of epistogrammas, and they only lasted for a couple weeks. And I think it's because the pH is not low enough. Uh, you would think that with my normal tap water, which is what I use, which comes in around 7.4 pH, uh, that the, the uh, tannins, because it's tannic acid, would lower that pH, and then you would think the dissolving driftwood and so forth would make the water softer, which should start to mimic uh, a little bit what Mike saw down when he was uh, snorkeling with the Tetris. So one culprit I think I have is I have two pygmy driftwood catfish in that aquarium that I almost never see. And you read online, everybody says the pygmy driftwood cats are very peaceful, they don't attack the other fish, they don't eat the other fish. Well, I think they're eating my smaller fish. Uh, only because that's the only thing that I can come up with. And they're nocturnal, uh, so I don't see them. But uh, uh, occasionally I can coax them out for the camera by putting some food in the aquarium. I'm using the extreme uh, cat scrapers and they seem to love that. So occasionally I can coax them out just for a minute till they see me and then they hide again. I think they've been eating the pencil fish. I think they probably are harassing some of the fish that they can't quite eat, which is stressing them, which could be uh, part of the reason why they have not been thriving. Um, but whatever it is, uh, I don't, often see a sick fish in that aquarium and yet they're disappearing. So you got to come up with something else. That's where I'm at with it. I know that there's been a lot of interest in this particular aquarium because I can see the views on YouTube and this is a, I think this may be the 16th video in the series that goes all the way back to when we set this tank up from a bare bottom. And I know a lot of people don't like the blue background. I don't like it either. I thought I had a background secured for this aquarium, but that hasn't worked out. I don't want to go into it, but that's one of the reasons why I haven't been um, more active in terms of changing the background on that tank. But anyway, uh, when you go all the way back and you watch the placement of the botanicals and you look how I put the driftwood and the thinking through with all the fish and everything, it's been a very interesting project, but I'm curious what you think if you want to leave a comment down below. What do you think of this aquarium? Does anybody have any idea what might be going on with my fish if you don't think it's the pygmy driftwood cats? Um, I'm just curious if anybody has any ideas. If anybody has decided to do this, has had similar uh, situations, um, or if, uh, if you just like the tank and you think maybe I take those driftwood cats out of there and just continue to see what happens. Um, I, because the water is not bad, and as you can see, the angelfish and the, uh, the larger tetras are doing extremely well. The uh, bleeding heart tetras absolutely love it in this aquarium. So I'm just wondering uh, what you guys think of the tank, what you think of the project now that we're 18 months in, and, and if you've tried it or if anybody has any thoughts on uh, you know, what, I, what I might do next with the aquarium. Do you like the plants? I don't know. But anyway, there's a look at the tannin tank. You've been asking for an update, so there's the update. I'll give you some more pictures uh, for you to enjoy for another 30 seconds or so and tell you that, uh, remind you to uh, find fincasters on uh, 
course here on YouTube, also on Facebook, and also if you search Fincasters on Instagram, I post just about every day, and uh, I've got a lot of different aquariums, so you see my planted tanks, you'll see my 180 gallon reef, which is kind of my big passion right now, <clears throat> and pictures here from the Amazon tank. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Fincast.